So my name is Jerome Kassirer, and I'm uh, currently a distinguished professor at Tufts University School of Medicine. I'm a visiting professor at uh, Stanford University in, in California, uh, and I'm uh, the former uh, editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine. Actually, I'm editor-in-chief emeritus. I was editor-in-chief of the New England Journal in uh, the decade of the 90s. It was a time of great turmoil, and the turmoil was based on the fact that managed care was beginning its heyday, and not only its heyday, but it was a time when managed care was beginning to abuse the population in many ways. At the same time, there was a great uh, concern, as there is today, about cost. At the same time, there was a major concern about the quality of care. And the reason for that was that people were concerned that if doctors were capitated, that they might uh, skint on, on care uh, and uh, just to line their own pockets. So the issue of cost and quality were all very important at the time. At the same time, it was the early 90s when uh, Mr. Clinton was trying to put together his health care plan, and at the same time, uh, Mrs. Clinton was involved with a small committee of people, and they excluded doctors. And one of the first editorials I wrote that had political overtones was in relation to why those doctors were eliminated from the discussion. And the fact is that what I said at the time uh, something that I became much more interested in later was that there, the doctors were considered just another interest group. <clears throat> and it was based on the fact that they were considered to be more interested in their own pocketbooks than they were in the care of patients. So I was concerned at the time about the quality of care, the cost of care, and uh, the issue of uh, the um, uh, uh, health care policy. So uh, to deal with the health care policy issue, I uh, asked uh, immediately asked John Eigelhart uh, to uh, put together a nine or ten part series on the American health care system. Uh, before me, Bud had uh, looked at the German health care system, the uh, uh, British health care system, and the Canadian health care system. But I came into the job knowing not, not a whole lot about the American healthcare system, and I assumed that other people would, would be also pretty ignorant about it. So uh, over the period of uh, several months, we published uh, a large number of pieces about the American healthcare system. So the problem of being an editor is that you never know what kind of an impact it has. You put things up on, in the journal hoping that, uh, that it will have uh, an effect on people. And as an editor, one of the philosophies that I felt was important was not to give people what they wanted, but to give them what they needed. So the series on American health care was uh, an example. And then we also, for example, uh, had a series on uh, molecular biology, uh, the, the methods of molecular biology, because once again, these were issues that were just beginning to uh, hit the pages of the journal, and it was important for doctors to understand them. In the 90s, one of the major uh, issues was uh, the control of HIV and AIDS. And so we published a great number of articles about things such as the uh, concentration of virus in the blood, uh, the CD4 counts, uh, and then also a great many articles about the treatment. Uh, in fact, I'm sure that a lot of the uh, treatments were first uh, published uh, in the New England Journal. We didn't pay a lot of attention to whether we published the very first paper uh, on, a, uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a treatment or a disease. So I really can't tell you 
uh, much about what the most important papers are because you never know what the most important papers are. The next year, they could be the least important paper. So one of the most rewarding things was the ability to do two things. Number one, to introduce new items into the journal. And number two, to write editorials about a huge variety of different things. So uh, the first thing I did is to introduce more clinical features into the journal. Um, the jur I described the journal uh, in one of my interviews as uh, something like dry toast. It was terrifically nutritious, but not easy to eat. And in fact, that's what the journal was like. It was it had terrific science, terrific health policy, but it was fairly dull. So I decided to introduce some clinical features and the uh, clinical problem solving series uh, that continues today. I introduced that in 1992. And then shortly after that, within a few months, I introduced images in clinical medicine. All of those uh, clinical features uh, were based on the research I had done in the 70s and 80s on how doctors think about problem solving. Uh, and then later I also introduced mystery cases, um, uh, clinical debates. So uh, the idea of that was to liven up uh, an otherwise perfect journal. I just tried to make it more perfect. So the second thing that I uh, did was to use the bully pulpit of the journal in a way that I thought editors should. So I wrote, uh, ed during my tenure, I wrote about 70 editorials, uh, which was probably about eight or nine a year. Uh, and these were not just uh, off-the-cuff editorials. These were heavily referenced pieces uh, based on, very often based on something we were publishing. So I wrote about the quality of care. I wrote about managed care. Actually, I wrote about five different articles about managed care. I wrote about standards, standards of training for nurse practitioners, standards of training for medical students, uh, standards for uh, organizations and things like that. And I also wrote about teaching. Uh, I wrote about how uh, residents and uh, should, should use journals and not just use books and uh, a, a number of other teaching kinds of things. So to me, oh, and by the way, I also wrote about two other items that gave me incredible notoriety. One was three editorials about guns and the uh, risks of guns. And the other one was an article about uh, use of medical marijuana. And that one, I, I have to admit, I wrote on my, in my car on the way down to the journal. Uh, and I, did, I wrote it because I was infuriated uh, the way the federal government was uh, threatening doctors uh, if they uh, uh, prescribed marijuana to desperately sick people. Well, I was trying to dig into any kind of corruption and uh, deal with that when I saw it. Uh, I was trying to deal with conflicts of interest. I was trying to get a message across of how to learn and how to teach. And I was trying to get the messages across about uh, a proper uh, practice of medicine. The New England Journal is a great journal. It's perhaps, uh, it's arguably the, gr the uh, best clinical journal in the world. And I was a, it was a privilege for me to be the editor-in-chief for so many years. My message for the New England Journal is to continue to do a great job, to continue to focus on what's important in medicine, not only the, uh, the science of medicine, but the policy issues, the uh, professional issues, and things like that. If it does that, it will certainly thrive another hundred years. So I su began to subscribe to the journal uh, in my second year of medical school. And I actually bound all those uh, editions. 
until I got to the journal, which I didn't need it anymore. And since I left the journal, I have a, uh, a lifetime subscription. I read it every week. I can't say I read it cover to cover, but I scan through it every week. I often end up reading uh, more than one article, and I think it's terrific. That's a very difficult problem because they have so many other sources of information that it's very difficult to get them to focus on a single journal. Many of them get uh, information from up to date or other such uh, medical textbooks on the web. Uh, they get it from uh, Google Scholar, which is a terrific source of information. Uh, and they get it from, uh, from Google in general, uh, from uh, streaming information that they receive every day. And uh, to get them to, to look at one journal alone is going to be very difficult. I think that the, the, uh, the challenge to journals in the future will be to how to get their information in a way that people can use it when they need it. And uh, obviously, uh, handheld uh, phones that give you the information, that will be uh, a, uh, a source that will be very uh, useful. I use it myself now. Uh, I look up information uh, in, on my cell phone all the time. By far and away, the most exciting aspect of being the editor of the journal was the weekly manuscript meeting in which we uh, would, 17 of us would sit around a table and hear the, uh, the uh, papers being presented by one of the associate editors. And we would then talk about the methods, talk about the results, talk about the interpretation, and make judgments about which papers should be accepted. So here we were, right at the forefront of science, with all of the newest material being presented to us. And here we were trying to make a decision about which were the best of the best. And it was the, one of the most intellectually exciting uh, activities of my entire life.